Okay, uh, thank you for staying to the end. Uh, let's do the survey, who has the most staying power, which sector of society has managed to stay to the end. Okay, the first group that is survived, uh, how many are still from the civil society NGO group here? Can I see a show of hands? Okay, you all are, well done, you all are the ones who normally stay to the end. <laughs> Okay, uh, our colleagues from the government, I see one here. Who are still with us? Government, there's one, right? One, okay. That's good. good news, let's give her a hand. Well done, yeah. <laughs> uh, from the academy, are they still around? From the university, there was a few. Ah, okay, so we have two, but we had more earlier. So thanks for staying till the end. It's not easy, yeah? Uh, a full day like this, but I think the discussion's uh, very important. Questions, provocative questions, what do we do? Katerina said, well, no need to discuss whether we agree equality. Equality is there to stay. Uh, how do we get it? Eh? So maybe uh, a few minutes. Uh, Ms. Isaac Rita has been here the whole day, uh, the last three days, to listen to Malaysia's story. Maybe some reflections come to her, some closing remarks for us to take home, and something that she may want to take home to, to Hungary or to Europe. So over to you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm certainly not in a position to, to, to tell you anything new. I, I think you have said anything, everything. And actually, Katarina had almost did my closing. Whatever you said was what I, what I was about to say. Um, during the day, there were some conceptual issues and challenges, but because of the time, I wouldn't go into that. Um, I would just summarize it. A lot of issues came up about, about what is legally binding, what is not, what comes from the treaties, what not, whether it's an individual right, whether it's a group right or collective right for minorities, how to define them. I wouldn't go into that, although, of course, I'm available to discuss with you if you are interested in them. In the, in the UN terminology and definitions on that. But what I would like to say, I think it's important at this stage to, to put the question on what governments should do. It's not about what they must do and what they can do, it's about what they should do. I don't like discussions when it's all about what is legally binding and what is not and what we are allowed to do and what, no, what should you do? And this is something you feel, right? You feel it on your skin, if things go right, you can see that if things go wrong, then you have to do something differently. So I think we shouldn't get lost into um, where the treaties are taking us. I mean, as, as also, again, Katarina said, we can see what is going um, wrong on the ground, and you have to address those issues. And it brings us back on, on to the, the definition, like who are the minorities here and whether the um, indigenous peoples qualify. In my opinion, it doesn't matter that much. You see your vulnerable communities. They shout out for help. It's easy to see. For me, I spent three days here. And of course, during this conference, it was clear. You just um, said it so precisely. We see the issues. We heard about the Malays who feel vulnerable. We heard about the Indian community. We heard from the Chinese community. We heard from the Orang Aslis. Uh, there was nobody who would, and the, Shi the Shia community. So it was all very clear to us what are the problems and what are the recommendations to those problems. I mean, let's not forget that everybody who came here came with a set of recommendations. Everybody knows the answer. So I think one, this is one question that we should take home, is what really government should do? It's not about what they must, what they should do, really, to, to address all these problems. The other one is the question to be answered is, how they should do it. It's not what. You know, you can see a lot of documents about ensure, blah, 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 um, advance, blah, 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 integrate, blah, but how? That's a crucial question. We know what we need to do, um, what you need to do. It's about integrating minorities, ensure equal opportunities, prohib prohibit discrimination, allow freedom of religion or belief. Now, the crucial question is how we do that. We all know what to do. I think what we need to answer how. And I think no conference uh, makes any point if, you're not, if you don't leave with some additional thoughts compared to what you came with. And I think all of us learned something today. So I think what can really move issues forward is if we go back home today, we should all sit down and think about what I can do. We heard a lot of expectations from each other, especially from the government. I used to be government. It's not easy. You can't please everybody. 
And we also need to acknowledge that sometimes it's our own community, it's about our own, own leaders or our own religious leaders who actually incite for hatred and intolerance. So we need to be critical. Everybody has a role to play. We can't shift the responsibility slowly to any actors. It's not the academia who will teach all the kids. It's not the NGOs who will provide all the services. It's not the government who will make all the good policies. It's just possible through a joint work. Um, you asked me about my uh, assessment on Malaysia. Of course, I, it's very short. I'm not in a position to, to really comment. I don't feel qualified enough to tell you because you know much better. But my overall impression is that I met Everybody who I met in this country is a proud Malaysian. People are so proud to be a Malaysian. They have a Malaysian passport, and when they travel abroad, they are so happy to say that I am from Malaysia. But when they come back home and we saw these pictures, then they feel that they are put in a box of being a Chinese, being an Indian, being an indigenous person, being a, a sect. Go back to Iran, go back to China, go back to India, go back wherever you came from. So th I think this is the pain here that you are all proud Malaysians, but when you are here, you feel that you are put in a box, and some of you feel suffocating in a box, because you feel that maybe you share the ethnic origin with others, but you don't share the same religious ties. And I think what needs to be acknowledged that there must be a, a possibility to cross and not to have these boxes. You can belong to any ethnic group. You can be an Indian, but be a Muslim. And there should be no clear lines, because this really makes people frustrated, and as I said, suffocating. And I was also asked by um, one of the reporters why I think it's important for Malaysia. And I think it's clear, because you can only build this country together. There is no future for Malaysia for one single ethnic or religious group. It's just a joint action. And everybody's fate will define of somebody else's fate. If you are not happy, your family won't be happy, your neighbors won't be happy. So it goes all around, and it affects everybody. So I think it's very important to build it all together and to acknowledge that you are the ones who have to build this country together and everybody has to take part in it. So I, I was also asked how I compare Malaysia with other countries that I visited. I can't respond to this question because every country is very, very different and you, there is no common indicators. But what I see here um, and what I experienced today that you have all these spokesperson for all the communities and all the issues and they're brilliant people and they all know the solution. So all you need to do is just to put your heads together and then de de decide what you can do in your own capacity, and then of course what you, how you can rely on others to help you. And again, you have allies in the government. Don't believe that you are all left alone and the NGO is doing their own thing and the government is the, the one who is lazy and lying. You have allies everywhere, so try to find them. I will also, of course, help you finding them and connecting you, and then build it together because I think that, uh, that you all have um, a, a very bright future and I don't, I don't feel that uh, you should be that pessimistic. There are problems, but you have bright people and they can take this further, I believe. Thank you very much. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for those uh, closing comments and uh, words of hope and uh, not singling out Malaysia as the no hope country, but one of the many countries that are struggling but that doesn't give us an excuse not to push our pace uh, faster. And I think that's what you're doing to encourage us. Uh, we've come to the end of this uh, one day conference. I need to ask the crowd here, there's some words at the back. They said equality for all. Do you all think that's going to happen in Malaysia, equality for all? Can I see a show of hands? I'm doing this uh, academic survey here. I don't come to any university. How many of you all believe that we will achieve this equality for all? Time frame, I'm not giving time frame. First, the belief that we will achieve equality for all. Yes, no? Okay, from my survey, it looks like 60% agree, okay? We need to work on that. The second question is, do we all agree that we are on the path to non-discrimination? Is that a, a, a felt uh, a joint feeling that we are, as Malaysians, on the path to non-discrimination. Can I see a show of hands? How many feel we are on that path to non-discrimination? Oh, this is now less, huh? You agree to equality, but don't agree on the path to non-discrimination. Okay, so you're talking about imported equality. <laughs> okay, I think we must start with the premise that it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen. Someone said equality is a non-negotiable uh, principle. It's in our constitution. It was there. The forefathers thought about it. 
the UN speaks about it, the ministers speak about it, no minister will utter you and I are unequal. What they say post the first statement is the dangerous one and that's what we need to catch them at, the, at their game. I think our challenge is to push these boundaries that if we don't do it, will remain. So if we ask the question 10 times, it's fine. Uh, today, Mr. Ho said, the sun shines on all. I mean, if we keep asking the next minister, does the sun shine on all? Uh, or there's some umbrella, some shadows. If all of us just ask that one question a hundred times in this year, can you imagine what's the message? Was it the same uh, speech by Naz Raja Nazreen, right? Some years ago, he said that we are all equal under this Malaysian sunshine. Eh? And but we agree to the words, but in reality, it's not happening. So I think we need to make a louder push, a more painful push. And uh, there's a list of pain. We need to now transform that list of pain to a program to, to change that, uh, that pain. Comas, with many other NGOs, are doing small initiatives, but I think we are too small on our own. The strength is this 100 over people here. We need to be louder. We have much more friends who have uh, come out to the streets to demand for justice, equality. There are lawyers going to court to push the boundaries. And I think you heard Eric, Professor Rami and other lawyers saying that there are many cases in court. Thursday is also a case in court. Uh, tomorrow, yeah? there's a case in court. And uh, everybody's hoping and praying that the independence of judiciary will show itself. Uh, that that decision to, to grant equality and uh, uh, for different communities uh, to use will happen. If it doesn't happen, let's see what happens from there. But let us believe that this sunshine is that equal sunshine meant for all Malaysians, set up in the early centuries, and now we are here uh, to, to experience it. So thank you very much for being here the whole day. The work is not complete. Malaysia is waking up slowly. There are forces trying to put us asleep. Uh, Roger said, what, the knock on the door method. Some of us have stopped knocking, we are just barging. Some are not barging, some are taking out the screws and hinges from the door. Many creative varieties to get into the door, but I think the message is clear. We cannot wait any longer. So with that, thank you very much. Another round of applause for all of you for being here. Yeah? Thank you.